This is the day our God has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Just a quick word. This morning, we didn't have joys and concerns before the service because we're going to try and incorporate them into our prayer time today. So at the appropriate time, we will have Michelle probably with a microphone, and we'll go section by section, and we will invite you to share joys and concerns during the actual prayer time so that we can actually respond uh, in our worship service. So this is the time to worship. And so let us prepare our minds and our hearts. Uh, Let us be open to the Spirit of God moving in this place as we gather to worship. And in the absence of a choir today, we will have a song of preparation. And the song of preparation will be on the screen. The words, I'm going to sing it through just this first verse once to teach it to you. And then there will be three verses Uh, But we'll start with the first verse after I sing it through once so that you can hopefully learn it well enough to be able to sing it. We have come by way of struggle. We have come. you to rise in body or in spirit so that we can join together in the responsive call to worship. Look to the Holy One and be radiant. Bless God at all times. Look to the Holy One and be radiant. Boast in the Holy One. Look to the Holy One and be radiant. Magnify God with me. And on this Reformation Sunday, let us join together in singing our beloved Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
join with me now in the prayer of invocation. Loving God, it is good to be with you in the company of the assembly. When we seek you, we find you. When we pray, you respond. When we listen, your voice sounds. Make your presence palpable in the places we gather. We come to be formed, informed, and transformed by your lavish and bountiful love for your glory and for all you hold within your heart. Amen. And another new song. I'll sing it through once. That way uh, we can then sing it twice after that. So it'll be a total of three times through. But let me sing it through once so you can learn it. take a moment then to greet one another, to pass the peace, or whatever it is that you want to share in sharing God's love.
Continuing with our lectionary readings today from, again, from the book of Mark, continuing in the 10th chapter, so picking up from where we left off last week. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, and it does say shout and say, so I'll step back from the microphone a little bit. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly. Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. May God add a special blessing on these words, this word, as it is shared with us today, that we might have a better understanding of God's word in our times. Amen. Well, grace and peace be to you all from God, our Creator, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray this day that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to our God, who is our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Take heart. It was in the summer of 1990 that I had the privilege of representing this church at the Great Lakes Regional Youth Event sponsored by the United Church of Christ. And it took place at Lakeland College, which of course is now Lakeland University, a closely affiliated institution to the United Church of Christ. And I was accompanied by two teen church members, Julie Rigg and Tim Pop. We were part of a larger delegation made up of youth and leaders from the Illinois Conference. And we also drove the van that used to be owned by the Congregational Church of Algonquin, a 15-passenger van. So we were able to help transport other youth from Illinois. It was at that event that I was first introduced to the Reverend Brian Sergio, whom many of know, you know as a UCC pastor, singer, songwriter. Uh, some of his songs have been shared here over the course of the last 30 plus years. Well, Brian just happened to be the one who was on stage a good part of the time providing worship leadership and music, obviously. It was also the first time I had the good fortune of meeting the Reverend uh, Mark Showalter, who was the moderator of the three-day event. Some of you may have heard of Mark Showalter. He was a UCC minister also, as was his father, and I believe even his grandfather. Mark was the moderator of the event, and he was assisted during the course of the event by his faithful companion and service dog, Daisy. And in the course of the time that I knew Mark, he had three different Dobermans uh, who were his guide dogs, his service dogs. I'm happy to say that in the years that ensued since 1990, I was blessed to have developed close friendships with both of these gifted leaders. Brian and Mark. Sadly, Mark passed away five years ago, but his legacy lives on. When he was a younger man, Mark was unable to adequately manage his diabetes. 
and consequently lost his sight. However, Mark inspired many of us as he learned to adapt and to rise above his disability. To not just get by, but to actually excel in life, in ministry, and as a capable human being in spite of the many challenges that he faced. I also had the opportunity uh, to be Brian's chauffeur, or excuse me, Mark's chauffeur, uh, to several events over the course of time. And Mark actually was one whom you could get directions from. Uh, he knew his way around, especially uh, Wisconsin. <clears throat> one of the places that Mark was always able to find respite and renewal, as many of us did and have, was at Moon Beach Camp. Moon Beach Camp, of course, is our UCC camp located in the Wisconsin North Woods in St. Germain, Wisconsin. And from the time that Mark was a boy until his passing, Mark had attended and led countless retreats and camps at this wonderful outdoor ministry site, which actually I was able to introduce some of the young people from this church to as we um, organized at least two winter retreats uh, with youth from this church uh, at Moon Beach Camp. In the summer of 2015, I spent some of my sabbatical time at Moon Beach working alongside Mark, who just happened to be serving as the camp chaplain at that particular time. Being the same age and both being ministers with music backgrounds, Mark and I delighted in spending time together. But the one thing that was uniquely Mark was a certain kind of insight that he possessed that keen sense of being aware of what was going on around him. That uncanny ability to sort of fill in the voids that we sighted people often overlook. Mark Twain once said, you cannot depend on your eyes when, you ima when your imagination is out of focus. Good words to live by. Mark was one of the most perceptive and intuitive people I've ever known. And that's what I meant by insightedness. Well, that same summer, 2015, that same summer uh, at Moon Beach Camp, there was a, a young resident intern who came to observe Moon Beach Camp in action. Her name was Emily. I had the opportunity to meet Emily. And Emily was clearly going to observe camp through a different lens as she, like Mark, was visually impaired. In her case, blind since birth. And like her, she too seemed to possess that insight. Hers, however, was a little less seasoned, so to speak, not quite as refined as Mark, but she was very eager to learn. It was fairly obvious that Mark would be Emily's mentor and guide for the week. And I will never forget watching the two of them together, especially when Mark offered to give Emily a tour of the camp. And why not? Mark knew his way around camp better than anyone else. And yes, it was quite literally the blind leading the blind. And we all got a good laugh out of that. It should come as no surprise that I think of Mark Showalter every time the story of the blind man, in this case blind man Bartimaeus, comes up in Scripture. Jesus and the disciples are approaching the end of their travels. They're entering the town of Jericho on the edge, so to speak. One step closer to Jerusalem where Jesus will eventually pay the price. As we were reminded last week, 
The disciples have been selfishly arguing about who they'll get to sit next to them or, or, who, or which one of them who will get to sit next to Jesus in his new kingdom. You know, they're kind of brown nosers. Uh, they're crying, trying to uh, get close to Jesus so perhaps they can have the best seats in the house. So it's safe to say that they're still blind about Jesus' mission and purpose. And it takes a man who is literally blind to open their eyes and to reveal Jesus' true identity to them. And when they initially encounter Blind Bart, I like to call him Bart, when they initially encounter Blind Bart sitting in the gutter on the edge, quite literally, Bart instantly recognizes Jesus. He sees Jesus for who he is. The disciples still don't. They don't get it, but a blind man in the gutter recognizes Jesus for who he is. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People aren't referring to him as Jesus, son of David, but this blind man sees that and recognizes Jesus as that person. And then only a couple short verses after Jesus tells his disciples, this, this is why I mentioned that it's following last week's text. Jesus has just told them the story and the lesson about how the last shall be first. The disciples don't appear to be bothered, to be bothered that a beggar one of the least that Jesus spoke of just a few minutes before. The disciples are not bothered that a beggar is being pushed to the edge of the scene, forced to the end of the line. Oh, the irony. And even, even after hearing the invaluable last shall be first foundational Sunday school lesson, not one of the disciples want to defend Bartimaeus when the crowd silences him. As readers, we ask ourselves, why can't anyone see what we see going on here? But many sternly ordered Bartimaeus to be quiet. And then what happens? He does what anyone would have done if being ignored. He turns up the volume louder than the first time, son of David, have mercy on me. Now there's a reason for Bart's increasing effort to be heard. It's because Bartimaeus, this, this actually named blind man, which doesn't always happen, that this Bartimaeus is a God-appointed agent in the story. And so in response to the disciples' intolerance, Bart's persistent inspires something in Jesus. His perseverance inspires a renewed wave of mercy in Jesus. And so upon hearing the loud cries of the beggar, Jesus stood still, and I would like to say, more like he stopped dead in his tracks. And he turned, and he said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he's calling you. And so throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and he came to Jesus. Bartimaeus had waited a lifetime. He waited a lifetime to be able to see the light again. 
He waited a lifetime to experience the kind of illumination that could only come as a byproduct of the miracle of faith. Now, remember the rich man? I believe Brian preached about the rich man two weeks ago. The rich man who couldn't give up his possessions to follow Jesus. And while Bartimaeus doesn't possess much, the little that he has, his humble cloak, is something that he has needed to survive up to this point. But he won't need it anymore, so he throws it off, and he comes to Jesus. And by casting aside his cloak, he is showing his complete trust and his whole life faith in Jesus. He's confident that he won't be returning to his old ways of begging and his former place by the side of the road, quite literally, out on the edge as a marginalized person without a voice. And Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? Now, remember the similar question that Jesus asked a few verses early of his disciples. Same words. What do you want me to do for you? And of course, they wanted the seats of honor. That's what they wanted him to do for them. What do you want me to do for you, he says to the blind beggar. And the blind man answers, my teacher, let me see again. And Jesus recognizes the man's heartfelt quest for wholeness. And he says to him, go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. That means he joined. He joined Jesus. So we get the impression that with his new insight, Bartimaeus feels whole to the point of wanting to commit his life as a Jesus follower. Receiving mercy has a way of doing that doesn't it? And in our time, with all the blindness that exists in our time, in spite of our biases and our prejudices, in spite of our human arrogance and self-righteousness, we can still learn from stories like blind Bartimaeus. And what can we learn, we may ask? That God's mercy is there for the taking. Whether we deserve it or not. But more importantly, we realize the importance of extending that same mercy to others. That when we hear the words of the crowd encouraging Bart to follow Jesus, when we hear others telling us to take heart and to take action, Jesus is calling. When we hear those words, that we respond with a new commitment in our service to God, to God's church, and the communities where we live. We don't hear it very often, and I think it's an older generation that would probably utter this phrase, but remember the phrase, mercy sakes alive. Well, my friends, mercy can make all the difference in the world, whether the world knows it or not. Even as our world falls apart in fear, greed, in anger and anxiety, mercy matters. It can make a difference. So as we receive mercy, 
Therefore, may we extend that same mercy to others. So yes, take heart. Take heart and be merciful. That's not one word. That's a hyphenated word. Take heart and be merciful in all you say and in all you do. Amen. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, today we thought we would just try something a little bit different than what you've been doing. And uh, there are some basic instructions. Um, there's always uh, that important little point of trying to be somewhat discreet as far as what we say, being that this is being uh, live streamed. Uh, so if you have a concern uh, and it involves a person. Uh, first names are sufficient, uh, and we don't need uh, an extensive explanation behind that concern that you may have. Uh, simply a name and a couple of words uh, if you need to sort of help explain or fill in the, fill in the blanks, so to speak. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll start over here in the chapel area. Uh, and Michelle's there with a the microphone. So if you have a joy or a concern, and, and, and there's another part that you, the rest of us will play, when we hear something said, I will say, Lord, and you will all say, hear our prayer. Now, if it happens to be a joy, uh, the typical response is, Lord, hear our praise, because we want to give thanks and praise God for that joy. So we'll start over here if there are any joys or concerns. Okay, I have um, three, actually. One concern for Ken, who is in ICU. One for uh, Gina, who has discovered she has cancer. And the joy of my mother turning 95, in spite of hospice and all, uh, on Halloween. So it'll be, Lord, hear our prayer, and Lord, hear our praise. So, Lord, hear our prayer, hear our praise. Uh, for my grandson, Luke, who had uh, shoulder surgery on Friday. Lord, hear our prayer. Cecilia. Lord, hear our prayer. Kevin, for health issues. Lord, hear our prayer. For our cousin Bob, for his health. Lord, hear our prayer. This section. My dad for his uh, health and my friend for his re relationship. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pat, Alex, and Amy. Lord, hear our prayer. All of our shut-ins. Lord, hear our prayer. For my, for my dad, Ron. Lord, hear our prayer. Christy, for a stroke. Lord, hear our prayer. June Smith and Billy Glover. Lord, hear our prayer. Marilyn. Lord, hear our prayer. My husband, Bob, with health issues. Lord, hear our prayer. For my husband, Tony. Lord, hear our prayer. For Susie Hahn for healing. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders, and for my sister, Mary Beth, and her health. Lord, hear our prayer. Continuing in the spirit of prayer, let us just take a few moments for our own spiritual strength and continue to reflect on our theme for the day and 
the eyes opened. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus to reach out and touch him and say. our prayers, Lord, this day. Incline your ear to us and grant us your peace. As we continue to pray for all those in need, all those who struggle, all of those who are in pain, all of those who are seeking answers, and all of those who are needing hope, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join with me now in the invitation to generosity. Generosity begins as a decision from the heart. Let us, give from, uh, let us give from the gifts that we have been given as a sign and act of faithfulness. join together in the prayer of dedication. Loving God, bless us with increased generosity, trust, and faithfulness. Receive these gifts as an offering of praise. May needs be met, lives be changed, and hearts be warmed through our giving. Amen. Please be seated. We do have that. Let us join together. Um, actually, yeah, let's do that. I was thinking we had the announcements next, and then we were going to have the closing hymn. Let's do it that way. Let's do the announcements, and then we'll have the closing hymn and the benediction. I like that better. Good morning. If you are visiting us for the first time, we invite you to fill out a visitor's card. If you have a special prayer request, you are welcome to complete a prayer request card. Visitor and prayer request cards can be found in the pew slot in front of you and can be given to the ushers. For one more week, we are doing a food collection for the Algonquin Lake in the Hills Food Pantry. Bring ingredients for soup, chili, stews, seasoning packets, crackers, snack items, etc. You can also bring in staple items. Daylight savings ends on Sunday, November 3rd. Don't forget to set your clocks back an hour on Saturday night. 
The first half of the Mark Bible study on Sunday mornings will end on Sunday, November 3rd. The Bible study will then resume after the holidays. Join us on November 3rd for Heritage Sunday as we acknowledge the invaluable service of our congregation's longtime members. The Ministry of Deacons will be hosting a reception to honor our Heritage Society members immediately following the service. General elections are on November 5th. Get out and vote. Remember that our congregational church is a voting place. Senior Afternoon of Games is on Wednesday, November 6th at 12.30 p.m. Games and snacks will be provided, although you are welcome to bring your favorites. We can't wait to see you. Bibles and Brew will be on Thursday, November 7th at 6.30 p.m. at Port Edward Restaurant, 20 West Algonquin Road in Algonquin. Please sign up in the narthex or let the office know of your interest no later than Sunday, November 3rd, so we can give the restaurant a head count. Women's Bunko Night is Friday, November 8th at 6 p.m. with a $5 entry fee. The winner gets to choose where we donate the money. Men's Fellowship will meet on Saturday, November 9th at 9 a.m. Bring your favorite breakfast dish or just come to enjoy the good company. And you may invite a friend. The church office will be closed this Friday, November 1st. Please email Sherry at algonquinucc at gmail.com if you need anything. Sign-up sheets and more information can be found in the narthex or call the church office. Now I'm done. We should be on. Yeah, we go. I'm still getting used to the switch on this one. So, Be Thou My Vision, um, the jazzed version. <laughs>
Take heart, for God goes with you. Therefore, may your heart love fully and boldly. May your heart love loudly and actively. And may your heart love faithfully and miraculously. Go in peace and in love. <laughs>